And now I would love to invite uh, two guys in a little bit different format and they are going to have a little little chat about multi-chain future from Cosmos. Uh, Jean Milosevic and Ivan Bielaitz, give them a round of applause. Thank you. Well, great to be here together with you, Jarko. You know, uh, I'm glad that we met here so unexpectedly for this unexpected conversation about Cosmos. Uh, I believe, you know, there are some people uh, here who are primarily English speakers, so we are probably going to be uh, doing this in English and no one minds. Like super scared and uh, even proposed to, to talk today with about Cosmos that like uh, I'll talk in Serbian about Cosmos not because like Cosmos doesn't have like uh, uh, it's a Serbian translation just that we normally uh, we normally use the English service. Uh, I hope people don't mind. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, uh, so I'm here with Jarko from like at Svenny. <laughs> Uh, well, well, anyway, uh, I think a lot of people who are in Web3, of course, know about Cosmos and uh, what Cosmos did for blockchain in Web3. However, I believe that a lot of people here are not actually Web3 experts, so to speak. So, uh, considering Cosmos is maybe a bit less talked about than Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, could you tell us a bit uh, about uh, the idea behind Cosmos and how did you get involved? So the, the origins of Cosmos like are 2015, 2016, and so at that time like uh, there was Bitcoin, and Ethereum, um, and so the that was sort of like a, a kind of big shift, and the Cosmos co-founders were also part of like that that group of people, um, and so the they had like a different idea while both Bitcoin and Ethereum was sort of like offering um, single network. You know, doing something uh, with Cosmos idea from the beginning was that like there's no one size fits all solution, and that essentially uh, uh, we need we need something which will be like um, based on the, the two core values, so unity and interoperability. And so unity means actually that that you want to give communities. We heard like a lot of uh, I think talks today about communities. Uh, community also like. Uh, in, in, you know, in my interpretation is also like institutions and business. Uh, it's a group of people, a group of stakeholders who are trying to create value or do something together. And so Cosmos was having like uh, from the beginning idea of supporting communities who are also interoperable because it's hard. there are limits how much we can do like in isolation. And so once we manage to organize to do something, it's like very convenient if like we can create network effect by being you know, connected. And that's one thing, and the other like um, aspect of Cosmos, which is quite unique, that Cosmos was not trying to build like space shuttle, like several uh, blockchain at that time. Like if at home, if people are familiar, at that time it was like relatively easy to raise a lot of money uh, with ICO mechanisms, and so uh, Cosmos was one of the first project uh, with successful ICO. But they haven't went. They haven't raised like you know hundreds of millions. They they raised I think 13 million at that time. Um, and essentially they try to like build components, reusable components, which can help them you know people build on top. Uh, while many others were sort of like going for like space and sort of going with the big projects, um, you know very complex. So. Uh, is that what got you interested or? So I I studied the. Uh, Byzantine fault around consensus protocols uh, in Lausanne at TPFL, and after I, I finished uh, my studies there, um, I thought that okay, this was nice, really interesting, but now I need to you know do something else uh, for um, to pay pay bills. Uh, and so when I then I heard from a colleague that there is there is this blockchain stuff. You know, there was of course Bitcoin before, but that, that seems like uh, just money, but this blockchain stuff felt more like like platform and something uh, interesting. 
and uh, people at that time, actually, like Cosmos founders, also like managed to connect the dots between the this whole uh, academic, um, essentially history in distributed systems, and connected that with like proof of work uh, and blockchain, and uh, and then I, I learned about like startups at, at, at that time and uh, Tendermint, that was the name of the of the company, building Cosmos ecosystem was one of them, and they were having like. Um, a research engineer opening, which like seemed like uh, something I would do for free anyway, just to see this thing being used in product. And so they were also you know, willing to, to give me some organization, which was kind of awesome. And so that's uh, that's how it started. Uh, I think you're very modest in terms you know, of you being a uh, chief scientist, you know, Cosmos and. Uh, uh, Usually I make jokes about people, but it's very hard to make jokes about you because you did your, your PhD on visiting fault tolerance like in the early days when it comes to blockchain at least, before it was popular, you know, so I very much respect that road of yours. Uh, did you, I mentioned during my keynote, you know, that part about uh, the blockchain and Web3 being basically a continuation of the development of the internet. Is this how you view Cosmos and uh, everything uh, around that, or do you have a different vision, you know, when it comes to the future of the internet and fault tolerance systems? How how do you see that? Yeah, so the, essentially, the, the pitch for Cosmos, uh, just for people who are not familiar, is that with Cosmos, like we're building internet of blockchains. So like the this and that's like this interoperability part. And it was like the you know the, the the pitch at that time when I joined was that we we're building new internet, and so that I joined in 2017. So like six years later, um, it hasn't really been clear to me like what exactly that means. You know, like building new internet, and and even actually helped a lot um, demystifying that that aspects a bit. And I think things are getting more clear. But like. In general, we are of course not building something to replace internet. There are like amazing stuff with yeah, existing internet. As you said, it's a very complex um, system and there are a bunch of protocols which are working pretty nicely. So the question of like uh, what we're doing in my view, Web3 is like continuing this digital transformation or continuing like adding more uh, primitives or, or components to the existing internet so we can do some stuff like faster so we can do some stuff in a more secure way in a more let's say um, cost efficient way in a more decentralized way in a more secure way so that's what we are trying to do essentially. so definitely uh, it's not sort of like revolution it's in my view more like continuation of like you know uh, let's say nice nice trend which is already happening and just trying to figure out how we can have them uh, I think uh, when it comes to privacy and security on the internet, John Oliver had a great episode with Edward Snowden when he helped demystify a lot of things about security and privacy on the internet because a lot of people didn't really understand what the NSA actually did, what Snowden was talking about. So um, basically, you know, John Oliver did a, a number of interviews with people on the street when he was saying, you know, would you like the government to be able to see your dick pics, you know, that you sent over the internet to other people. And uh, uh, I wanted to ask you in that regard, you know, what do you believe is the importance of the, the new internet in, when it comes to Web3, you know, like what is Web3's dick pic moment? Yes, yeah, so the, um, essentially the... So privacy is definitely an important topic um, in blockchain and in general the way I'm, how I'm thinking about blockchain and I think uh, Emilia also like mentioning that it's small industry I'm not frankly also sure that we can call like blockchain or web3 still industry it's like still I like thinking about this more as like uh, a large scale uh, experiment which attracts a lot of like talent and a lot of capital and now we're able to innovate and they're really uh, super fast pace. And that's that's probably like the biggest value from, at this point in time, from Web3. Um, and so privacy in general, cryptographic primitives, fault-around systems, um, being able to like operate services in a completely decentralized way with like completely random 
strangers on the internet is like definitely something we're not able to do uh, 10 years ago. And so in that sense, like I do think that there is a potential uh, for us to like transact, to communicate, to do business in a more, uh, let's say, privacy preserving way. And, and we can think, uh, like just as an example, uh, when we joined, in, when I joined like um, Cosmos Project uh, and, and Tendering, that was the name of the company in 2017, uh, we were already aware of like uh, zero, knowledge, zero knowledge proofs. So that's like for people who are not familiar with us, like it's a cryptographic technique. Uh, which has really nice, uh, nice properties, and there is like one of them is like being used in, uh, to support to enable privacy uh, applications, privacy preserving applications. And at that time, it was really like exotic academic topic. So even like um, in academia, you were not having many people really able to sort of publish papers, let's say about this. And uh, the estimates at that time were that we'll have working implementation 20, 30 years. From let's say that, that period of time, and so five years after, we have like multiple implementations, which are some are in pro, and some are like very close to production, and so this is exactly like what you essentially uh, what you get when you are able to sort of innovate at a super high pace and attract like you know super smart people. So, you know, I'm very happy to say that uh, I've been working on uh, some projects with the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, when I say myself, you know, I mean my company, I, I would not say I'm good enough in math, you know, to, to be working on something that is right now ZK related. But uh, both MVP Workshop uh, and, and IT42 and 3327 as uh, a daughter company basically uh, did some work with Ethereum Foundation and with the Geometry Team. We also have one of our former employees join Geometry Team, we just had one of our employees join Polygon's, the Polygon ZK team, etc. So I find it very interesting, you know, that we actually have a number of people here in Serbia, uh, both, uh, mostly from our mathematics university, who are actively de dealing uh, with this uh, on the industry level. And uh, I remember when uh, we first got the, the idea to build some, some things that were ZK related, uh, I think it was 2018. Uh, my main problem with this was we were talking to clients, you know, we were telling them, you know, we know some people who might help. It uh, might, we can add this as a feature to your product, but it will take like six to 12 months. And now with the ZK Starks and ZK Starks, you know, those things are uh, a part of like general purpose computing and uh, just get applied. So I think uh, the industry, when it comes to ZK proofs, uh, went a long way in terms of uh, actual general purpose usage, you know, like there is a lot of work now done, as you said, that can be actually reused. So uh, I believe that's a very fast way, way forward, you know, right now. And uh, But let, let me bring us back to Cosmos in these other terms, you know, ZKs are now big, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem, because of their other properties in terms of scaling, uh, many scaling solutions use them, you know, to make Ethereum basically more efficient or to make uh, parts of Ethereum more efficient, so to speak. When we were uh, working on Polygon, uh, you know, a lot of work done was taken from Polkadot and from Cosmos in terms of co concepts and translated to Ethereum. However, one part of Cosmos that I always uh, loved, so to speak, you know, that was never transferred, uh, you know, was IBC or the blockchain communication protocol and uh, where do you see the role of IBC you know uh, in this uh, new internet and uh, when we are talking about these uh, these interconnections of different blockchains because I think you know uh, a lot of people should be thinking more about IBC as a concept at least yeah so the just also for for people to to explain a bit like the so the cosmos uh, is like architecture, it's like philosophy, it's, it's a like a technology stack. It's not a chain, like there, it's a, like a set of like blockchains and applications using the, the same stack which are interoperable using actually IBC. Uh, and so IBC is one of, it's part of the stack, it's one of the major innovation uh, of Cosmos. And it's true that sort of like uh, Cosmos was quite ahead in terms of this um, 
this idea uh, compared to the, the rest of the ecosystem. And now we are seeing pretty much like in every major blockchain ecosystem, very similar ideas. And in, in that sense, like the IBC is, is sort of um, imagined as a, as a TCP IP, you know, or, or like this kind of core layer of internet part for blockchain, which allow you to verify uh, data you receive from from like the counterparty chain or counterparty applications on a, on a different chain. And in that sense, like it is designed uh, in a modular way, similar to how internet protocols are designed. It has been implemented and used for a couple of years right now, and it's probably most widely used, the interoperability protocol in blockchain. And so the beauty of, of IBC is that it doesn't really like uh, capture value on its own. So value is essentially an application level user. So it doesn't prevent essentially anyone like uh, benefiting from it. Um, so let's say Cosmos as a, as a project does not really like directly benefit um, in terms of some kind of token value from using the IPC. And the way we're thinking about like now the sort of alignment in a larger ecosystem is that, that uh, there is opportunity for people to like learn you know, from some our you know successes and failures, your IBC uh, and sort of try to like realign here. As as doesn't really make sense that um, as as you know we discussed so many times that we end up being more fragmented. Like internet, uh, if internet would only have like partial connectivity, it would have like significantly less value. The same thing is in blockchain. If you want like to build decentralized application which can only be used by you know, its users and have, does not really have a way to interact with like the rest of the world then it will have like significantly less impact than something else and so in that sense like IBC come like with a modular stack it is able to support like different validation uh, techniques and, and proofs um, it comes with a set of like high level protocol for um, token transfer for like um, possibility to like uh, control accounts on remote uh, system uh, it, it uh, comes with the capabilities to like query data in a secure way from essentially it gives like a set of uh, distributed APIs people can use to build applications uh, on top of IBC so whoever is like uh, connected to let's say IBC or, or how we call it your chain can essentially benefit from like capabilities from users, from liquidity, uh, in a pretty standard and simple way. Uh, you know, you decided to come back from Switzerland, you know, and uh, live in Novi Sad now. What uh, brought you back and uh, where do you see Serbia and this whole battery, you know, ecosystem and how does one, you know, get involved with Cosmos? I know how I got involved, I just didn't know you, but you know. Yeah, that, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really a great question. And so when I joined in 2017, um, I actually tried, I mean, at that time it was not, there was few people like, like Ivan uh, who were sort of like seeing, uh, seeing value and, uh, and trying essentially to contribute, but it hasn't really been, uh, very well known and popular, and I was attended uh, in a few talks, and and the feedback I was getting from people was normally that uh, it seems really interesting, but they are not able to understand like at all what I'm talking about. Um, and so five years after, um, I feel we are like uh, at a very different place. And so uh, being at the Ethereum uh, at the same place, Ethereum conference, I think. Uh, Recently, uh, I met some people, and uh, some people also from like you know Ivan Circle and Indral from the blockchain world, uh, who were building their careers from Serbia, you know, let's say global careers, and um, I was really impressed by the level uh, knowledge, essentially um, projects we are doing. So I think that we are definitely in a in a much better place. And um, for a long time, like I wasn't really even trying to collaborate it, but, you know, locally. Um, I worked for, for a company uh, we created in 2020 with uh, the guys from from you know, the Tender in Cosmos space, um, and the company is like uh, global. And I was for a long time the only one from Serbia, and um, and we hired like um, 
recently the first employer in, in Serbia. And even like, you know, in, in my company, it was like not always easy to like propose someone from Serbia. So I need to say this, there are still biases, but like uh, we managed to, I think, uh, to change things there and I think to open doors for people to, to now participate and not be afraid, you know. So that, uh, so I think, you know, we are on a good track. I would like to see more, as other speakers were saying uh, during keynote, more um, courses being created with these. These are fascinating topics. Uh, blockchain is like a um, synergy of like pretty much all hard computer science disciplines and uh, distributed systems, large scale computing, cryptography, privacy, security. Um, user experience, like essentially, um, we have everything there, and I think like that it's it's kind of fascinating, not just business wise, as Emma was saying, but also like just uh, from you know engineering perspective. And I would really like to you know to encourage everyone to you know take a look. Now most of this stuff is open source. For Cosmos, like uh, people can go to cosmos.net or, or company I'm, I'm like. Uh, working with is called informal systems and uh, it's also informal good systems so there are a lot of bunch of materials uh, the products we have in a cosmos tech are have like quite like strong uh, product market fit used by many people and so yeah we're open for uh, contributions and i'm personally always super happy to you know to facilitate people from serbia to enter the space and, and try to find space uh, you know, I want to just say, uh, in order to wrap this up, that I do believe that Cosmos is not just one of the biggest blockchain ecosystems out there, but uh, one of the more open ones and more democratic ones. So from that standpoint, uh, I do believe that uh, talking to Jarko and people from Cosmos ecosystem, you know, being, being Serbian people or from other nations makes a lot of sense for all of those who want to enter web free or who are already part of web free in some way. And there are many things done in Cosmos that we incorporated in uh, Ethereum solutions, etc., etc. So from that standpoint, I do believe you know Cosmos is one of the, the pioneers of everything that you can to be doing on the internet. And I'm really happy to have you here and hope to have you at more conferences here in Belgrade or Novi Sad going forward. Happy to be here, and uh, yeah, thanks uh, organizers for inviting me uh, to participate in this amazing conference. It's the uh, first time I'm here, and I really, uh, really like the energy and, and really big, uh, big uh, thanks for organizers and putting this together. And I really feel kind of stronger that we are on a good, uh, on a good track. Thank you.